Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 review. Um, that's because this is a PS3 and PC review so I can't really see one or the other because it's both. I've got the PlayStation displaying on the screen and I've got the PC sitting next to me on a well, laptop on a desk which is why I can't show you the screen of that one but I will basically mention well, the slight differences. Um, obviously, for those who are confused as to why I'm doing both, basically, Portal 2 launched on the PlayStation, Valve have allowed Steam access, you can play on your, like, cross-platform co-op and play with your PC friends, obviously, and that, and vice versa. So, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, when you put the game in, you'll simply have to either sign up to a Steam account or sign into a Steam account, and... Well, you can pretty much do that, it seems, as many times as you want. Sign into them and all that. It's just a case if you want to get one copy of, of the PC version. I say that because I actually bought the PC version and we brother bought the PlayStation 1 thinking that we wouldn't be able to use the one and the same copy that they'd be linked, but they're not, so, well, fill your boots, really. So, options screen, there's some slight differences. Obviously, the PC's got full video customization for graphical quality. Obviously, the PC's got full uh, control customization. Um, the PC's got robot enrichment center, which basically allows to put your robots in hats and things. They don't appear to show up on the PlayStation. I can only assume that means that they're never going to show up on the PlayStation and they're not in the game. Maybe they'll do it as an update, I don't know. So, your options for the PlayStation are rather limited, with your audio video, you've even got uh, limited config controls, there's no customization or anything, just default config 2, 3 or 4, you can still choose the stick layouts and the invert and the sensitivities and things like that. So, let's just jump into the game, and I'll be showing off the co-op and I'll explain why in just a few seconds. So, as you might have figured, the co-op's going to be a lot different to the single player. The co-op campaign is actually totally different. It means you get two full campaigns on the game. And to invite people is quite simple. You just go into your Steam friends list, regardless of what system you're on, and you just send an invite and you join the game. The reason I'm staying to the co-op, though, is this game is probably one of the best I've ever played. In all honesty, even though it's here, well, I'd personally consider it my own vote for game of the year already. It's absolutely phenomenal. Everything about it's amazing. Except the reviewing it, because the one player, I can't show much footage, if any at all, of the one player without spoiling things. Because, for example, if you wanted to see the gels, the gels would show something that's on the screen all the time during that chapter that would be one of the biggest spoilers you'll have ever seen in any game. So I simply can't show the gels off in the single player. I can't pretty much show any of the new stuff off because of that, so I'll be sticking to the co-op and explaining the new stuff as I go along. So, with the co-op, there are five separate campaign type things to beat. You just go into each of the sections on the hub. You can choose past levels or later levels or anything. And it's quite easy to do. So, you just, um, well, as you can see, the big robot, the tall one, which is me, doing, you can just flick through the levels with, you know, whatever you said, E, K, me or something. You can also put up with a neighbor's noisy dog, which I apologize, I can't do anything about that. So, I'll just shut up until hopefully it stops. That'll give me a good chance to cut into the level. So, now that the dog's stopped, the things that I can say about the single player is that you've pretty much got the best voice acting I think I've ever heard in a game. Obviously, GLaDOS is back and it's the original voice actress and she plays an even better job in this. Stephen Merchant's in it, who's the un well, probably the least famous of uh, the Office people and I personally think he's better than Ricky Gervais and he plays an amazing part in this and then you've got... Uh, the guy who plays J. Jonah Jameson in the Spider-Man films, who basically, well, plays Keith Johnson in this, and he's absolutely phenomenal. You, you really can tell that the script and the voice acting's had a lot of work done on it. So, now to the court player. The whole point is, as you can imagine, you have to help each other out. So, one of you stands on a switch, while the other gets through a door, and things like that. These are the simple ones, though. It does get much more advanced. So, it's a case of putting portals in the right place, to be able to get to the end of the level and just solving the puzzles in the right way. So, after much arguing, this is pretty much the only one I'm going to show the solution off to because it's the first one. It's a case of one of you stands over there and if you're not playing with a headset or anything, don't worry. You've got a certain few buttons that can do things. Like, for example, you can hold down, I can't remember what button it is on the pad, but you can hold down a key and you can do things like signify to push that button or you can start a countdown for when you have to both do things at the same time. You can point, look over here, look over here. You can do 
stand here, stand here, things like that. So you, you will be able to communicate even without a headset. There's also some quirky gestures you can do, like you can play rock, paper, scissors, or you can, for example, take the other person's head off, roll it around and play with it, and just stupid stuff like that. So you can either wave to, I don't know, wave, or, or just like do daft things to regard teamwork. But anyway, oh, and to be fair, you can also show off what the other person's doing by holding down, I think it's triangle on the PlayStation, and it's whatever you set it to on, well, the PC. So the bottom right screen there is showing what I'm doing on the laptop, and it just allows you to see what the hell the other person's doing, so you can know if they're intentionally messing around. So, this is what I mean by showing off the solution. One of you stood on the switch, that opened the door. The other one then had to go through and open a switch, and then finally open this switch. From there, you've got to use your four portals, because you get two portals each, and you've got to simply make it so that you can walk straight through without any need of the switches, and get to the end of the level, and move on to the next one. And it really is as simple as that. The doors won't open until you're both there, and that's basically the first very simple puzzle. After that, it gets much harder, much quicker, with all sorts of new things, and... Well, I'll explain the new things after I cut past this loading screen. So, very quickly to mention the new things, I'll start with the thing I've already mentioned, which is the gels. There's a blue gel, which when you jump on it, it bounces you off, it's repulsion gel. There's a speed, uh, an orange gel, which speeds you up when you move across it. There's a white gel, which is probably the most important, and it's the one that never seems to get mentioned, which is actually paint. Now, paint allows you to plant portals on things. So you've got that white board over there. I can fire a portal and it'll go straight on. All the black boards around me, not painted, not the right type of surface, can't fire portals, can't use them. So you've got to aim the paint using the portals, which tends to mean putting one right at the end of like a faucet and it'll fire out and then you've got to aim the portals to fire it across the either the floor, the wall, the ceiling, to allow you to advance to different parts of the level. And you've basically got to use all the gels for that. You've then got things like light bridges where it'll be a light beam beaming from one end to the other. You'll plant a portal in front of the beam where it ends and it'll actually start from the end, well, from the start of that portal. So it allows you to move bridges around. You've got flippers which when you jump on them they fire you across the room and it's a case of putting a portal in the right place to, fire, to get fired through into it to, with enough momentum to go and exit somewhere else. Obviously you've got the buttons are back, the cubes are back, the companion cubes. You've now got cubes that reflect lasers though so you can put them in the course of a laser beam and have them directed and there's just all sorts of things that are new about the game and it's the type of thing that just makes it one of the most comprehensive and complete sequels out there so anyway this is a section where I've got to push the switch at the same time as someone else and then run down to push that so simply do it one two three drop down then run across I'll push one switch he'll push another switch and the co-op really does require co-op for the majority of the gameplay it's rare that you'll ever find yourself in the place of the other person barely had to do anything at all other than play support at the right place. In fact, I think I can only remember one level and GLaDOS even made fun of it for how easy it was. So, I've pretty much got nothing left to mention. There's still a couple of new things like um, these here, which if I direct the laser, I have to now, uh, as part of the laser things, as well as being able to destroy turrets with the laser beams, which is quite funny, you can activate nodes and that, and that's, well, basically the laser beams explained, and obviously they work through portals as well, pretty much everything does, to be fair. But, uh, apart from that, that's pretty much everything new to mention, so on to, I suppose, the serious part of the raid. Uh, again, you're probably going to be thinking, I wish you could have shown the single player off, but again, it's the type of game that when you play it, you'll understand exactly why I couldn't show it off. So I will at least mention this, using Steam's timer, the game took me about five and a half hours. The game's difficulty depends purely on how skilled you are at being able to beat logic puzzles. The developers themselves actually came out and said that the first game was either a quick two hour blitz for most people or it was a 15 hour epic. It, it just literally depends on how good you are at solving puzzles. It's not a case of being good at games or a case of being really smart and knowing you know the square root of 75 and things like that it's just how you can look at it a certain situation and think yep that's how I do that and if you're really good at that the game's not going to be all that hard you're going to blitz through it but it's the type of thing that happened with me and I can't blame the game because it's not the game's fault that I'm I've got that type of mindset 
Instead, it's a case of they've done things to make it so that you don't really care, and that is done in the form of the excellent script. Honestly, you'll go through it, it's pretty much a laugh a minute. It's one of the funniest, if not the funniest games I think I've ever had the fortune of playing, and I really hope there's a Portal 3 with the same cast or similar cast and design. It's just absolutely excellent. So, as I say, the single player takes depending, and the co-op takes depending. Either the game's going to last you something like 10 hours, or it's going to last you 30 hours. But it's well worth taking a look at, and I really hope you like it as much as I have. To be fair, I'm a complete idiot. There is something that I can mention. It's um, I'm blaming this solely on playing the PC version and PC version alone. This is seriously the only time I've touched the PS3 version. So I might as well mention as well that, oh my god, Valve have done an absolutely phenomenal job porting this. Other than the fact that I'm using a pad which is a bit clunky compared to the mouse and keyboard, I'd swear it's you know, an identical version of the game. They've done, probably done the best port in the history of and finally console gamers are getting the experience that PC is it PC gamers have gotten all this year all these years anyway before I stutter even more the PS3 version the only major difference really is that this one has split screen rather than having well no split screen at all I can at least see however that um, when I have played PS3 to PC there's no lag it's as if you're playing split screen just with a full screen it's again another fantastic job that Valve have done and Hell, I don't even know why I'm kind of sounding surprised by this, because after all, Valve are my favourite developer. I think their whole fan service and everything is absolutely amazing, and games like this just pretty much prove it for me. So, before I get inundated though with comments about it, I have remembered now at least, Ellen McLean is back doing a fantastic job as GLaDOS, J.K. Simmons is Cave Johnson, and you've then also got Stephen Merchant, who I've already mentioned, and he plays Wheatley, and he, he plays an excellent part, they, they all do to be fair. So, that, um, well, really is everything that I can think of to say about the game this time, other than, if you haven't guessed by now, it's amazing, go and try it. So there we go then, that's been the review, I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion, so instead I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. Also, if you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there, and don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212. Signing off.